So the other thing that I mentioned um, is that we're doing an axonometric view, but we're not just doing an axonometric view. We're doing an exploded axonometric view where the pieces are being sort of pulled apart so that we can see how they go together. Now, uh, what you see here kind of makes sense because it is so simple, but once you have all the little bits and pieces of hardware that are going to be attaching this thing together, uh, it makes a lot more sense to do an axonometric. So again, hopefully I can find that file. But um, we can still sort of simulate that here with this file. Uh, first off, the concrete is very simply put just going to yank back a little bit. You don't have to completely separate it. It's kind of up to you to determine how much overlap is going to be appropriate. Um, but the, the idea is that you're going to see where and when they're going to interface. So there might be just a little bit of overlap on that corner. And then we're going to supplement the assembly with line work that we're going to do in Illustrator. Okay, so now we're not only just taking a section and overlaying it in Illustrator, we're actually starting to draw analytically over top of our model using Illustrator. So um, you'll see what that looks like in a second. So let's grab both the um, bars and the, um, the fabric, fabric, excuse me, fabric screening, um, and we're going to pull both of those off together. The reason I'm pulling both of those off together is because um, they don't really attach to one another, so it's kind of like, well, I mean, they sort of are one system that works in concert with one another. So I'm pulling those off so that all you see is the concrete, the frame, and then whatever's attaching to the frame, keeping it simple. Um, then we can zoom back in, and as long as you didn't orbit out of your camera angle, you're still set. Um, you probably will want to resave uh, another camera angle, though, or another camera position, I should say, uh, so that you don't, uh, well, I guess so that if you need to remake the render, the proportions and stuff are going to be set as well. So let's save this. Okay, so let's do, let's set up a test render, um, and then we'll take a look at uh, whether, the, whether or not we like the materiality. What is that? Okay, that's just that. Sorry. Um, we'll take a look at whether or not we like the materiality, and then, um, you know, we'll kind of calibrate and tweak it so that it makes some sense. So um, let's take a look at our camera settings. Um, actually, let's go to the environment settings first. So the environment settings are uh, a little different for this one because we want it to be um, we want it to be simple, and we don't want it to have really anything behind it, or we could easily sort of mask it out. There are two ways of doing this. You can use what's called an alpha mask, or you can use um, basically just a white background. Sometimes I find that it's far easier to use an alpha mask because, well, actually, let me ask you this first. Do you know what an alpha mask is? Okay, let's talk about that first. Let me just show you an example real quick from the illustrious Google. There we go. So an alpha mask is basically, um, in the rendering world, it's, it's like a positive negative layer that exists within the image that allows us to select it in something like Photoshop. So we might actually have to use three different software packages to produce this, depending on what and how you need to do it um, and where you need it to wind up. So anyway, Photoshop is the best at uh, using the alpha mask. I of the three, I think, uh, Adobe Creative Suite software packages, I think it's the only one that will allow you to clip that. Um, but anyway, so what it does is it allows you to sort of just kind of literally mask out things that are in the background. So in this case, it was like a, a portrait of someone, and, um, and you can just kind of say anything that's black or any, anything that's on the grayscale of, of black to white is going to be removed to that degree of opacity. So if it's fully black, it gets completely erased. If it's somewhere like grayscale, sort of in the middle, like up here, it's partially erased. So that's just like one type of use of that. So anyway, um, the reason I like the alpha mask um, when we're doing something like this is because if you render it with a physical sky, you get realistic reflections on materials that reflect, which is really powerful when you're trying to breathe a little bit more life into a render. So um, actually, now that I'm looking at it and thinking about it, I think we should switch it to physical sky. It's going to give us a, a good reflection. Um, so don't worry too much about the um, angle of the sun. You can 
well, yeah, okay. Let's let's put some sun on there. Let's take a look at um, under view. All right. So let's make sure that we're getting a camera angle. Yeah, that would have been bad because it was facing the opposite direction. So as long as you get it so that the, the sun is kind of reflecting something that's telling you a little bit about whatever your facade system is doing, if you have overlap like this, I think that's appropriate. Um, yeah, let's go somewhere like that. That should be enough. Uh, turn that off. Turn that off. Okay. And um, right now we're just doing a draft render, so don't worry too much about your um, settings. I'm going to set it to bright exterior. It's kind of my default for this kind of thing. Um, and default settings should be fine. Your output, when you actually produce your render, make sure that you're um, modifying your, your film size and your output resolution. But right now, again, draft render, so it's fine. Um, and... You don't need multi-light, of course, for this one, and if you turn it off, it will render a lot faster. Um, so make sure you turn that off. Um, leave it on production, though, because especially with this kind of render, it should run really fast without having to do like a, a, a draft render or something like that or turn your lights off or anything like that. Um, okay, so let's do a test render. I'll let this run for a few seconds, but um, what you notice is that it's kind of just like this solid blue background. I am seeing some shadow. Um, should render a little sharper shadow than that. Um, but anyway, what I want to study is you know how the materiality is looking um, of this surface versus how the materiality is looking of this surface. So it kind of gives it that sort of patinaed look, like it's a little bit weathered when I used the um, nickel plated. Uh, or, or was it zinc? Zinc plated, um, galvanized surface, and then the concrete back there. So that's a perfectly fine analytical diagram of the assembly of this system. So I think I can move forward with that. Um, I'll put that aside for a moment. When you're um, exporting this though, it is absolutely critical that you export the alpha mask. Um, so scroll down on your um, output tab and make sure that you check on alpha. Otherwise, when you save the file, it will not carry the alpha mask with it. So check that on. Um, you can, uh, auto's probably fine. Uh, don't worry so much about these different file formats. Um, the, they have a lot to do with resolution and quality. And since a lot of what we're doing in this class is like draft quality, I don't think you have to worry too much about it, so just leave it on auto. Um, I'm trying to relearn by scraping through the annals of my memory whether or not we need opaque. I don't think so. So let's try without it for a moment. Um, all right, so then you just run another uh, test render and you get the alpha mask when you export it. So let's run a test render and then we'll do the export process. It's gonna look exactly the same as the other one. Okay, so here's the important part that I want to point out. Um, even though the background has turned black, the rendering of the materials is the same. So if you look at kind of the bluish nature of, of this right here, um, that looks exactly the same as the one that we did previously. I mean, it's kind of an illusion because it doesn't look as blue when it's on a bright blue background, but it is, it's the same blue. Um, if we put it in Photoshop, I guarantee you it would be the same blue. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, I, I actually don't really like the resolution of this, so I'm going to render one for a few minutes at a higher resolution, and then we'll bring it into Photoshop so you can see really how crisply the, uh, the alpha mask works on a, a higher resolution image. So um, just give me a couple minutes on that. You guys can continue to work on your stuff, and then we'll finish up on this.